Hello, my amazing children. This is Grandma Carla, and I am back with more missionary stories with the Millers. This book is by Mildred A. Martin. We are on Lesson 25, The Man with the Gospel Papers. Friend, will you have a gospel paper? Ralph Palmer held out a small tract to the man passing on the sidewalk in front of him. Surprised, the stranger looked up. He saw a big man wearing a friendly smile. The paper booklet in his hand was pointed neatly with the title, was printed neatly with the title, Four Things God Wants You to Know. Yes, sir. Thank you, the stranger replied. I do need to find out more about God, he thought as he walked on down the street. My doctor just told me this morning that I don't have long to live. God must have sent that man to give me this paper. A tear slipped from one eye and trickled down his cheek. Meanwhile, Ralph still stood in his place on the sidewalk, busily passing out gospel tracts to all who came by. It was a fine spring day in Newport News, Virginia, one of the world's greatest harbor cities. Ships come and go in its port, carrying cargoes to and from all parts of the world. I wonder how many of my tracks are carried by sailors to faraway countries, Ralph mused. He slipped several more tracks from the bundle in his left arm and held them ready in his right hand. Another crowd of people was approaching along the street, and Ralph wanted to be prepared. Friend, will you have a gospel paper? No, I won't. Get out of my way, snapped a surly-looking young man. Why don't you stay off the streets with that junk? Ralph only nodded courteously and turned to meet the next person. A well-dressed woman came near, and Ralph offered her a tract. Sudden anger flared in her face, and she stamped her foot. Don't you ever ask me to take one of those things again, she cried. I've already had two of them, and I tell you, I don't want any more. Another man accepted a paper, only to tear it to bits and throw them into Ralph's face. Laughing evilly, he turned away. Ralph sighed and breathed a prayer for forgiveness for those foolish people who would not think of their souls. How suddenly they could be brought before God's judgment. How well Ralph remembered the engineer on the C&O Railroad. Back in the days when Ralph worked for the railroad, it had been his job to inspect the air brakes on locomotives and passenger cars. Late one night, after he had finished inspecting an extra long train, Ralph climbed up into the locomotive and spoke to the engineer. After exchanging a, a few friendly words, Ralph handed him a couple of tracks. You give me some of these little papers every time you see me, don't you? The engineer laughed as he stuffed the tracks into his shirt pocket. The whistle blew, and Ralph swung out of the cab. That train was headed for Richmond and made good time. The engineer was a man of many years' experience and handled it skillfully. He slowed down at the proper time as they neared curves on the track and opened the throttle on long, straight stretches. All at once, though, his firemen began to notice that the train was not slowing down as it should. Some dangerous curves were coming up ahead, but the engineer did not slacken his speed. Aren't you going too fast, sir? The fireman shouted. There was no answer. The engineer was sitting straight up with his head bent forward, apparently watching the track. Had he fallen asleep at the throttle? Wake up! The fireman shouted again. You are going too fast! Still, there was no reply. The fireman grabbed the engineer's shoulder and shook him and then jumped back, terrified. The engineer was dead. His lifeless body slumped over and fell to the floor. The fireman threw a brake lever and stopped the train. Other crew members climbed into the cab and helped him drive slowly into the next station. A doctor was called, but it was too late. The engineer's heart had stopped beating, and he had gone suddenly to face the judgment with Ralph's tracks still unread in his shirt pocket. Now Ralph bowed his head as he stood on the sidewalk. Help me, Lord, 
to reach more people with your message before it's too late. He prayed another handful of tracks ready. He stepped forward as more people came out from the nearby store. Friend, won't you have a gospel paper? He asked politely. Two little black girls with freshly braided hair came walking along hand in hand. The older one took a track and said, Mister, can you give me some money to help? Can we give you some money to help you buy the track she pass out? Mother said we may give you something. Why, that would be very nice if you want to help pay for the tracks. Ralph smiled at the children. After feeling around in her purse, the little girl held out two nickels. Thank you, girls, and God bless you, Ralph told them as they skipped happily away. Here comes a police captain, Ralph said to himself a few minutes later. I wonder what he wants. The officer approached Ralph and held out his hand with a friendly smile. I suppose you are Mr. Palmer, he said. At Ralph's reply, he went on. One of my secretaries brought me a tract with your name and address on the back. I came by to tell you we are glad for your work in our town. The whole police force appreciates what you're doing, Mr. Palmer. Ralph chuckled to himself after the policeman had gone on down the street. He was remembering another town where the police had actually arrested him for passing out gospel tracts. There are a lot of adventures in my work for the Lord, Ralph thought. He remembered a day when he had stood in the freezing wind on the corner of Granby Street in Norfolk. It was the 23rd of December. Shoppers were crowding the streets and the sidewalks, hurrying to get all their Christmas buying done. Ralph's hands moved constantly in the cold air as he held out little tracks to people rushing by. From morning until supper time, Ralph worked, passing out about 9,000 gospel papers. But as the day wore on, he began to get discouraged. So many people took the papers only to drop them underfoot in the street as soon as they walked by. The sidewalks around him were littered with hundreds of wasted tracks. The men and the women of Norfolk were not interested in God's message of salvation. Why not just give up? It was late when Ralph reached home, tired and cold and hungry. I'm never going to Norfolk again, he announced to his wife. Those people aren't interested, so I may as well not waste any more time and money on tracks for them. They throw away more tracks than any other city I've seen. But first thing the next morning, Ralph told his wife that he was going back to Norfolk. Norfolk, she exclaimed. I thought you said... I know, Ralph interrupted, but I was wrong. The Lord told me that I should go back there today. So on the last day before Christmas, Ralph once more handed out thousands of tracts on Granby Street. About two months later, the Palmers received a letter from Florida. Here is what it said. Dear Brother Palmer, for 13 years, my husband was an alcoholic. Many times I had to take our three children and flee from his threats. I had prayed for him so long. Last Christmas, he left us and went to Norfolk, Virginia to visit his buddy who also drinks. As they walked down Granby Street toward a little liquor store on the night before Christmas, a man handed them two gospel tracts. They put them in their pockets, and when my husband got to his friend's house, he began to read. For the first time in his life, he saw what was wrong with him and who his enemy was. He pushed back the whiskey bottle and said, You can have this, Ted. I'm finished with it. He went right away and caught a train to come home. Now my husband is a Christian, and I thank you from the depths of my soul, Brother Palmer. You saved our family all because you passed out tracks that day. We praise God for this mighty work, Mrs. H. Ralph smiled as he remembered that happy letter. Even if only one man was saved, out of 9,000 people who took my tracks that day, it would be worth it, he thought. Would you like a gospel paper, he asked a man who was coming near. No, sir, the man growled and waved Ralph away. Friend, will you have a gospel paper, Ralph, Ralph asked the next person. Yes, sir. Thank you, thank you, this one replied. 
It's just like Jesus' parable of the sower who sowed his seed. Some falls on good soil and some upon stony ground. Ralph mused, Lord, I pray that your work may bring forth fruit. Historical note, Ralph Palmer faithfully sowed the seed. During his lifetime, he personally handed out over 9 million tracts, which would make a pile weighing more than 20 tons. Sometimes he passed out 10,000 in a day, which would average one track every three seconds. His gospel tracts were carried all over the world by people who received them, and he had letters from people as far away as Japan. Ralph and his wife Martha also made thousands of gospel signs with letters that glowed in the dark to place along busy highways. Many thousands of people who drove past these signs read the messages over and over again. You must be born again. Where will you spend eternity? Or Christ died for your sins. Ralph Palmer lived in Virginia until the day of his death in 1976. If you would like to know more of his life story, read A Sower Went Forth, Rod and Staff Publishers. And that was a very exciting one about the country that I live in, which is North America and the United States. Not all people in the United States are friendly to the gospel, and um, we need missionaries right here in um, North America. And this is Grandma Carla, and I love you.